Holla! Ballers to the Brofist to you all! Welcome to Drama Friday! Raise your hype high! If you did not know, we've just finished Street Week where we played through the whole of Mass Effect 2. As previously, we played Mass Effect 1. And the next Street Week will be shockingly Mass Effect 3. Where we uh, wooed our way into the pants of many a blue lovely lady. Not even trying to be exclusive, but that's the way it ended up. It ended up, blue ladies only. During that, I did lose my voice. It's nearly back, but no doubt when I do some uh, kiddie voices, which I am going to do here today, uh, my voice is going to absolutely wreck me completely, and that's just going to be a thing. So you're going to have to bear in mind of that. <laughs> you're going to have to bear in mind that that is definitely going to happen. Some announcements to get us underway here. Uh, the schedule, the new schedule will be going up on Twitch, which is my offline background is my schedule. So if you're ever sh unsure of when I'm going to be streaming and things like that, you can always just drop onto my Twitch channel and you'll see it in the background as the schedule. So it's updating today for the next month. During the next month, you may see down the bottom in the announcement section, I'm going on vacation. It's the only vacation I take with my kids during the year, generally speaking. I'll be taking my boys and my wifey away for a couple of weeks getting refreshed because we've got balls deep into the mid-year now we've done most of the big setup for all the big stuff uh for the coming year including the next legacy video which is going to be pretty cool pretty cool we've got to hire a castle for a day uh <laughs> well we're not hiring it we're just going to use a room it's very cheap i'm not buying a castle uh but we are going to use a castle for a day we're going to be filming in a castle which is going to be awesome as shit uh hopefully hopefully so it's good all that kind of stuff good stuff is coming as soon as i get back so I'm going to be bogging off to the Canary Islands uh, and having fun, a nice little holiday away with my kiddies and hopefully get some colour and come back to the land of the living a little bit and do all that kind of stuff. So it should be a hell of a time, which is going to be awesome. Uh, on top of that, there's no web show tomorrow. So in the lead up to my holiday, and that means I have about nine days from today to prepare everything for next week and the two weeks while I'm away. That's three weeks worth of videos, y'all. Uh, most of it's going to be the big class analysis and the dungeon reviews. And also looking at the new specs that launched on Legion Alpha during stream week. Again, they always launch these patches during stream week for some reason. Uh, so we did play some Legion today. Uh, it's on the VODs of you Twitch if you want to see that. It won't be uploaded. So we're going to be doing that over the next, I've got that in the next seven days. On top of that, we won't be any Drama Fridays, obviously, because I won't be here. So they're going to be Drama Fridays next week. Probably Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, there will be a live drama show. So they can upload to YouTube on the Fridays while I'm away. That's generally the idea. So there won't be a web show until I get back. There's no time. I also have a wedding to attend in the next eight days, including the stag do and all that kind of stuff. So basically, I'm fucked. All right, I'm fucked for the next like eight, nine days uh, completely with work and RL stuff. So there's going to be no web show, which is sad, all the sads, uh, but that should be the way it goes. But on top of that, big thumbs and big love to hopefully Ghosty, who's going to have his daughter in the next few days. They're, they're, they're now there. They've reached the point where the baby can arrive. Uh, hopefully it's not while I'm not in the country. That would suck. Although it is Ghosty's birthday while I'm away, that would be awesome because it means I could dodge that, which would be super cool because that means I'd have to get him a gift or anything like that. Because I know the country doesn't count, right? It doesn't count if I'm not in the country. I can't, I can't be obligated for all these sort of peasantries of being home in the UK when I'm not even there so I can fuck it off. So hopefully everything goes well with the birth of Ghosty's daughter. I'm sure he'll post on Twitter when she arrives and it should be all good. That is my announcements. <laughs> that is my announcements. That's it. That's not why you're here right now. It's Drama Friday, son. So we're going to kick back and relax and my voice is going to be good. And we're going to open with a story of pedophilia. Yeah, why not? <laughs> the tale of the geeky pedophile. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm laughing. You shouldn't feel uncomfortable. <laughs> you shouldn't feel uncomfortable. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Don't all abandon the stream. Don't all abandon the stream. It's fine. Although I did get to type that. I hope I spell it right. I believe there's an A in there. Not being a pedophile, I'm unsure of the rules. Uh, starring no one. There's no names in this one. No one. Sad face. Sad face. Hashtag sads. Hashtag drive by. Those of you who've seen the Deadpool movie, which is awesome, uh, will know what that means. All good. All good. <laughs> Nervous laughter. <laughs> All right. I have spelled it wrong. Excellent. I'm, I'm quite proud of that. 
<laughs> so many of you know the correct spelling. Dude, this is how you spell it. Okay, there we go. Boom. Beautiful. Thank you for your pedophile corrections, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate it every single day. Every single day of the week. I appreciate it. Let us begin, shall we? In a wonderful, wonderful way. <laughs> the tale of the geeky pedophile. The story is how I got registered as a local potential pedophile because of World of Warcraft. Finally, a tale from the other side. <laughs> Finally, a tale from the other side. <laughs> I've done it wrong again, haven't I? Oh, no, look at this. I didn't even look. What an idiot. Uh, da -da -da -da. I'm going to do that because it's going to annoy everybody throughout the entire stream. And I don't want that to happen. Close. Clicked out of the box. Nightmare. Boom. Great success. Are we happy? Are we happy? P-A-E. Oh, I've got the E and A mixed up. Here we go. Here we go. We're almost there. Nailed it. Yeah? Nailed it. Nailed I've been caught enough to know how it's spelled. <laughs> I got this, man. I'm all over it. I'm all over it. We almost got it. Yeah, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's okay. We got there. It's important that we get it right. It's important that we get it right. Otherwise, all the pedophiles will be angry. And we don't want that, do we? <laughs> Where are we already? I thought we started. <laughs> We're a few minutes in. <laughs> Alright, let's go. <clears throat> the story of how I got registered as a suspected pedophile because of World of Warcraft and my own greed. And my own greed. Yeah, pedo bears, pedo bears can say hi. It needs to be right. It needs to be right. Holla preacher to greens from Norway, you Viking son of a bitch. I'm sorry for my bad English. Let's hope spell check take care of most of it. Close enough to Nord Nordic, right? So quick info, I'm 25 years old, Norwegian male. With a huge, proper Nordic beard. And I've been a geek ever since I found my mum's Sega behind my stored toys in my closet when I was five years old. Does that suggest that your mum hid your Sega? Or was it supposed to be a Christmas present and you completely fucked it? And you completely fucked it. That's what that sounds like. My story starts after I moved to a new place with a new job. I was working in a local food store. Asda, Walmart, you know it. In a mediocre city in the cold northern edges of Norway. Fuck the snow, by the way. The Aurora Borealis ain't worth the cold and snow, so y'all can stop being jelly. I want to go see the Aurora Borealis. I do not want to live where the Aurora Borealis is. I want to visit it, and then come home. That's what I want to do. And I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that. Anyways, anyways. <clears throat> I have a soccer field. Correct use of the word. I have a soccer field outside my window. And last summer, there were kids playing that soccer there. Or football, as we call it. American football is the dumbs. Why is it called hand football if you use your hands? They do kick the ball. It's called a field goal. I was having my window open, hanging out of it like a boss, having a cigarette and drinking a cold, cold beer. When I overheard a conversation between two kids who were about the age of 10 and 12, right? So we're in that area. We're growing the pubes. There's pubes imminent. Sitting on the side of the field, close to my window. Kid one. <clears throat> you ready? My parents won't let me play video games. They say it makes you violent. Kid two. Ha 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 ha. I get to play World of Warcraft on my father's PC. It's amazing. I am level 60. Damn. I want to play that game so bad. I would pay money just to play it. My parents are rich. So they give me lots and lots of money. I just don't get to spend it on anything fun. Sorry. Ha ha ha. You may be rich, but I get to play World of Warcraft with my dad. <laughs> Your parents are so strict. Yeah, I wish I could come visit you and play games, but your parents would just tell my parents. 
Yeah? Parents are grasses. Your kid's been over here playing World of Warcraft all day, bro. And your kid stinks. I'm just saying, you and your rich kid can fuck off. Fuck off, mate. Don't want it. This is when it hit me. I raised my voice a bit and said, Hey, kid. How much would you pay for an hour of World of Warcraft? Now, I don't want to say you're massively fucked up in a way that is just astronomically dumb. But when you want to start charging 10 year olds to come in your house and play on your PC, you astronomically fucked up. Massively. Like, huge, bro. 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 If the stranger kid isn't allowed to play World of Warcraft, he's too young for you, bro. He's too young for you, yeah? If his football is one of the plastic things that flies away in the wind, he's too young for you, bro. He's too young for you, bro. Just leave it alone. Alright, that's all I'm saying. Just turn around, put your cigarette out, throw it at him if you want for being a bitch and not playing well, but come back inside, yeah? Come back inside and leave it be. The kids turned around and looked unsure as if they should be talking to a giant purple dildo with danger written all over it. But then they stuck their heads together, team. Then they stuck their heads together. And they started to mutter amongst themselves. <laughs> I follow up with, Don't worry, kids. I'm too lazy to hurt you. Now! I'm not saying that you massively astronomically fucked up, but when you know these kids are terrified of your potential penis, you don't follow it up with, I'm too fucking lazy to bang you, bro. You don't tell a 10 year old that I am too lazy to come at you. Don't do that. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. <clears throat> so then I asked the kids, what's your price? Now. <laughs> Don't ask a 10 year old what's your price. Don't say that. Just shut the fuck up. Just go inside. Just close the fucking window. It's cold, man. You said there was snow everywhere. Just close the window and leave it be. But you didn't, did you, bro? You didn't, bro. No, you didn't. You took, you stroked your big Nordic magnificent as fuck beard. So you look skeptical anyway. You look suspicious. Little sinister with your big beard. Cigarette. Burning the embers round the side. And a beer. You look suspicious as fuck. You look like a gay pedophile, gay Viking. Gonna come charging down with your pedophile dick hands. That's what you look like. Beer in one hand, cigarette in the other. You're like a drug dealer, bro. Leave it be. Just back it up a touch, yeah? Ease it down. The one kid who didn't get to play turned around and started his approach. Couple of meters away from my window, he stopped and said in a low, almost whispering voice, I would pay you 20 kroners. <clears throat> Fuck is a kroner, bro? Do you even euro? Norway. That's about two to three US dollars, team. Two to three US dollars per hour. For an hour. But that's only if my parents never find out. Alright. So he's on a two to three dollar per hour World of Warcraft secrecy contract. Right. Got to keep it on the down low. <coughs> of course at that age. Every kid believes every adult knows their parents. Right. Every kid believes that. Of course every adult knows each other. For real bro. At ten years old they all believe that. After then telling the kid my work hours. And agreeing on a time and a place where he could pretend to go and play soccer with his friends. I was, and I was home from work and didn't have raids. He went home. So you agreed. The situation is, this kid's going to pay you. He's going to lie to his parents and say, I'm going to play football with Norway kid. Right? But in reality, he's going to come and give you money to come and sit in your house. Nothing about this seems like a bad idea yet. We're going ahead, are we? We're pushing forward. Okay. Long story short then, the kid shows up with enough swag cash to cover my monthly wow fee and a little bit extra. I let him play wow on my PC and monitor, on my PC monitor, 
while I was watching that Netflix and the YouTubes on my TV, bro. I had him leveling up my character while paying me to do it. That's slave labor, bro. That's underage slave labor. That's where you are now. He's paying you to work for you. Yeah? So bad. <laughs> it was the best idea ever. Was it, bro? <laughs> was it, though? I didn't even know this kid's name. Don't know his name. Strange 10-year-old kid. And I really couldn't care less. I hate kids. <laughs> well, there's your best defense against being a pedophile when the cops show up. Hey, <laughs> copper. Norway cop. Don't even like kids. Hate kids. For reals, can't be a pedophile. Hate kids. Hate kids, mate. Hate kids, just saying. But being paid money for having someone level your characters is the best. <clears throat> now as time went by, audience, he had started to come over two to three times a week. Over the last few months. Months. <laughs> months. I started to introduce the kid to retro games. I let him play on my PS1, on an old box TV, my Game Boy Color, and my Sega. Now, you know what's sad? If you were part of the Big Brother program, which I think you have to go to like fucking SeaWorld or go to some park or some shit for safety reasons, whatever, bro. Uh, you'd probably be like a really good Big Brother. <laughs> you could just play with gay games and stuff. And you, you know, it's a volunteer thing. You don't get paid, but you could do that. But anyway, <clears throat> I mostly transitioned him away from WoW because I wanted to play the characters he'd capped for me. And I could tell he was bored of WoW at Endgame. Be Endgame. <laughs> and I had games lying around, so why not make some more money and keep the money rolling in? Six months, audience. Six months. Other kids started to find out about this deal. Nightmare. How? I have no idea. But one day, I had two kids knocking on my door, wanting to come in. And as they were calling it, rent some of my awesome retro games. I asked the kid who was playing on my PS1 if he knew them. He said yes, they were his friends. I asked if he had told them about what we were doing, and he said no. Well, can't we always trust a 10 year old? So I looked at the kids at the door and said, do you know how much it is? They said, sure, 20 knocks. Crown hours. Why is it called a crown hour? But then it's like N-O-K. What are you up to, Norway? Busted, mate. Busted. Yeah, sure. 20 crown hours for an hour, right? Why the hell not, I thought. Over the next few weeks, I started to have a little bit of a problem. Kids kept showing up with money to play video games and calling my house game club <laughs> oh dear we have moved from colossal fuck up to majora's mask dude majora's mask there is a giant moon face dish face combo over your house slowly creeping in to the eventual collision with the world okay i'm just saying we are in Majora's Mask territory right now. That's where you are. Are we clear? Good. I only, there was a problem. There were so many kids showing up, but I only had two Game Boys, one PS1, one Sega, and worst of all, one TV. Nightmare. I didn't have capacity. We are out of space for all these kids. My living room had turned into a fucking kindergarten. But I didn't care, there were now so many kids who were paying by the hour to be there, I was actually getting good money. They paid me extra, a bonus, to play loud music over my speaker system. They seemed to get a kick over very loud music, despite the fact it was Norwegian death metal. Onwards we roll, team. <clears throat> Onwards we roll. I didn't even care 
I didn't even care when teenagers started hanging out, paying me money to use my house as a gaming club. They would show up, pay me at the door just to spend time there with their friends, right? Sharing turns on my PS1 and Game Boys, eating candy, food, energy drinks, and listening to shitty music. I tell you what, we're in a good situation here. Delicious. At the peak, <clears throat> at the peak, I made once 200 plus dollars in a day for sitting on my ass and letting kids come into my house and play and chill. I even bought a new TV, upgraded my own PC, I bought an N64 plus games. You started to invest in your kindergarten gaming club. Illegal kid storage. You did reinvest the money. You re you doubled down. You doubled down and decided to make it a better environment to attract more kids. You created a kid nest. A sticky spider kid nest. For strange kids. Jesus. I bought a new TV, upgraded my PC, bought an N64 Plus games and then another TV. And then started to educate them. This is like School of Rock for massive colossal morons, dude. And decided to educate them about Zelda and Pokemon Stadium. I was really proud that none of the kids ever beat me in Pokemon Stadium. Chansey, best Pokemon for the win. Where are you now? Where are you now? Along this road. So one day, while my living room was full of teens and kids, I barely knew any of their names and I had no idea if their parents or family were or what they thought they were doing. I was actually surprised none of them tried to steal from me. I had a knock at the door. A knock at the door. No shit. Time's running out, motherfucker. It was the popo. They received messages about me seducing kids with video games. Really did that. They came barging in and were shocked to find around 20 kids and teens aged from 10 to 16 playing games, listening to ridiculously over the top music and floating around popcorn around the room. It didn't take long for them to get the name and phone number for pretty much every kid there, although some of them ran out of my back door. They then took me down to the station. After spending the evening and night being interrogated and locked up, they let me go the next morning. There was not a single piece of evidence of anything illegal going on, just a really suspicious amount of actual cash in change. This is kids we're talking about. They're not handing over fucking notes. It's fucking lunch money. Yeah? It's Kit Kat money. It's Mars Bar money. And all of the kids all defended me. Saying that no, nothing strange happened. They just played video games and ate popcorn and energy drinks. Thank God there was no modern... First world kid in there. <laughs> Thank fucking God. He touched me. He touched me, brah. I had to, obviously had to shut down the club. And didn't let anyone in anymore. Although they would not stop knocking at my door. <laughs> I got just back to playing WoW and enjoying the silence of my life. I do kind of miss the easy money and beating the crap out of them at video games. But good things must come to an end, I guess. Why don't you just set it up as an actual club? For real, bro? <laughs> For real? Just set it up as an actual club? You've already invested in the equipment. Get registered. Not the kind of registry you ended up on. But still, you know, make something happen, man. Make something happen. Oh, Jesus. Even though there was no proof of anything, I still got registered as a suspected potential paedophile. And because of all the cash, the police also thought I was a minor drug dealer. <laughs> this drug money. Drug money, bruh. <clears throat> and they have me come in for blood tests every now and again to, tell, to check for drugs. <laughs> I 
This is why I kind of regret letting the whole thing go as far as it did. Oh, you regret it a little bit? Little bit, you regret it, a little tiny bit. Maybe there was something wrong somewhere along the line. Hard to figure out where it started to go wrong, right? Maybe it was the very beginning, but who can tell? Who can tell? I think the money got to my head. I wish I had quit when the first kid had capped my characters and just avoided this. No, 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 no. It's the worst line in the story, bro. I think the money got to my head. I wish I had quit when the kid capped my characters. No, you quit before you asked a kid into your house for money. That's when you quit. That's when you quit. You quit without starting. It's easy. It's so much better. Still, yeah, as the chat says, you got a, <clears throat> you got a new PC out of it, though. So, there you go. Thanks for reading. I hope you enjoyed. Yeah, we did. I'm sure we did. And a life lesson to everybody watching right now. Don't do that. Don't do that. Just don't. Listen to me. Trust me, guys. I'm telling you right now. Just don't do that. Yeah? Just leave that alone. Just leave it alone. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. If you if you don't invite little kids into your house, right? Even if there's money involved, if you don't do that, you're unlikely to get registered as a potential pedophile for running a kiddie gaming club. I'm just saying, there's a good chance that won't happen. Pretty good chance. Solid chance, even. Solid chance. <clears throat> Let's go to some private service. Let's turn it up a notch. Life advice. Yeah, man. <laughs> Much life advice required. Uh, so good. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, I'll choose the names as we go. Uh, the names kind of pop up as and when the story progresses. Thank you to the Noble Raid, by the way. I just saw that there. Thank you to Team Noble. Welcome, team. I was in the middle of a story, so I couldn't really give you big shouts. But welcome, squad. <clears throat> the Ellie's drama. <clears throat> you ready? You ready? Best regards from Team Poland. We're already turning it up a notch. I'm coming to you with a small compendium of short stories collected over the years. Multiple private servers. Rage. Relationships and betrayal. We've got it all, team. We've got it. The prelude. This bit of the story includes me. Okay. Uh, the names are still coming from Patreon, by the way. Uh, okay. <clears throat> the other half will be killed. An alliance game master. Right, will be killed, Gallon. Uh, an admin who will be Flaherty. <laughs> I can fit all these names in. Basco, top name. You sound like you should be an alien. I love Basco. Oh no, I need a lady. Basco, you're in the next one. I need a lady. Where's my ladies at? Where's my girls at? <laughs> Will be... Ah. <laughs> Mara. Who is... <clears throat> oh, sorry, Mara. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> That's the description. <laughs> That's the description. Sorry, Mara. <laughs> All right. My adventures with WoW begin shortly after around the relapse of the one and only The Burning Crusade. I was around 14 at the time. I was about to get my first PC. Which, in hindsight, was the worst PC of all time. But it served me for several years. My IRL friend was already playing WoW on his pimped out Ultra PC on a private server. He got his copy of the game and all and downloaded that from an older kid that lived next door to him. Passing those discs mate. Digital download. Pass the disc down. Be a bro about it. Pass it to the left. All good. All good. And he seemed to move on from private servers or the game itself. So a guy who stopped playing WoW. Anyway... <clears throat> He was mainly showing off by soloing lizards in Blackrock Mountain.
since he believed that they were some of the toughest enemies in the game. And at one point, they had been able to kill him. But now he'd be grown powerful enough to kill them non-stop. Yeah? Power creep, bro. Power creep. Look how powerful I am now wrecking these fucking lizards all day. He kept showing me this. At which point, I now realize he was a super douchebag with an overgrown ego. Yeah? Ball sacks. <laughs> ball sack. What a ball sack on this guy. What a big pair of hairy nuts. Anyway, I borrowed the disc with the game and the patches from him and installed it on my new shiny piece of shit PC. I created a dwarf hunter since I loved the idea of having my own bear as shown on the cinematic. And my leveling began. I don't think I've ever done much besides some quests in the first hubs. I just killed mobs with my melee weapon, hunter by the way, till about level 24. Ha! <laughs> Wooda! Take that! Wooda! Then it happened. Me and my friend argued. I don't know what it was as we were 14, but the re or what the reason around it was. But it was a pretty bad argument for 14 year olds. What made it worse was that he knew my login info. He had helped me set up the account on the server. You can guess what happened. My level 24 dwarf was gone. I threw a tantrum. I put so much effort into grinding those levels. It took ages to kill them with my melee weapon. I couldn't stand it. I decided that I had to move on to a new private server and leave everything that I had there behind. Level 24, guys. Level 24? It took me some time, about a week, to recover from the backstabbing. My would-be friend served me, and after making some research on the interwebs, reading up about the game and private servers, I travelled to a server called The Searing Zone. Ooh. Ooh. And I was to become a Blood Elf Rogue. A server with a small community, about 50-ish people. Tops, good server. Where I spent most of my early days. While small, it was a great community. I made so many friends. Some of them I still talk to to this day. After a few months of making my name on that server. I say months, but it may have been over a year at that point. The memory of those days is a little fuzzy. I was 14. I got to know the server admin. Flaherty. A chill, sweet guy. Who decided that I was one of the most active people and outspoken on the server. And that I should be upgraded to a Game Master account. So I could deal with small issues. Like unstucking people and such on the Horde side when he was offline. Prestigious bro. Mate, you're enjoying our server so much. I want to give you some obnoxious duties to go along with it. How does that sound? How does that sound mate? Mate, mate, mate. Do you want some really trivial annoying tasks to do? Yeah? No, it'll take you out of playing it. Yeah? You into it? You into it? You get a Game Master account. Pretty good. Yeah? You in? You in? Good. Good. Gladly for me. I was just an observer of the storm of awkward that was about to come. The Alliance had the similar person to Flatty in the form of an Alliance Game Master called Kilgallen. An American. His girlfriend at the time was Mara. <laughs> also an American. They most likely lived together, but I can't confirm or deny. The thing about Mara was that although she was a quite a nice person, she was a little bit odd. Yeah, a little bit odd. Mara was known for using her favourite emote. She would ran randomly hump other players in game when they went by her. And use weird sexual innuendos to anyone on the server. Including the cross server chat. Anyway. Mara and Kilgallen had a falling out. Cutting out? Oh no. Wait. I think I can fix that. Fixed. I think. I think it should be fixed. Okay. <laughs> so, the Alliance Game Masters, Mara, Kilgallen, they had a falling out. Was it because of the humping? Was it the innuendos? Let's find out. They had a falling out. And they took their IRL arguments 
out to the server's general chat. <laughs> I can imagine them living together. Probably gaming in the same room like that. Oh, dick! Mature as fuck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Still cuts out. Everything was fine my end. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe I'm just... Uh, Mike beeps when you're not talking. Oh, yeah, it's supposed to do that. <laughs> it's supposed to do that. It has silence detection. Yeah, it's, uh, the mic deactivates when you don't talk. That's normal. It might be starting to sound a bit more uh, obvious, but yeah, it's supposed to do that. It's supposed to do that. <clears throat> uh, okay, so they're taking out each other in general chat. Like a good, uh, mature couple. <laughs> they're doing that. But then they both vanished. Then they both vanished. They disappeared. We don't know what happened. It was just so sudden. It was a nice couple of weeks, to be honest. A nice couple of weeks of silence. But then Kilgallen returned. As a regular player. Stripped of his GM powers. By Flaherty. Everything seemed back to normal for a while until Mara came back. But she still had. Her game master title. Everyone was confused by how that came to be. And as we found out later, the falling out between her and Kilgallen was because she was trying to fuck Flaherty. Oh, filthy bitch. Filthy bitch. She's trying to fuck the GMs. Bitch. Even better, it later came to light that she actually moved from America to Sweeland to live with Flaherty. They both became more active in the server community and would start talking about their sex life in the server general chat. They would say things like, be right back, we got a fuck. The server obviously started to fall apart. The Wrath of the Lich King was coming and everyone wanted a Wrath private server. And so people started to move on. Mara managed to track me and some of our friends to message us to come back and play WoW with her again. It would have been okay if it literally had been not been over a year since the server had started to crumble. She used to track us by finding obscure YouTube channels with random raid videos and see if our names were in them and track them from there. Some say... Some say that to this day, she still watches our Facebooks. It could be happening to you guys. It could be happening to you guys. I'm just saying it could be happening to you right now. She could be in your fucking good book. Keeping her eye on you to see what's going on. But then we moved on and we decided to learn to raid. <laughs> what's wrong with what's wrong with her nose? Why doesn't her head move? Oh dear. Oh dear. Right. <clears throat> I need a GM. Who shall be Vandermai? Vandermai, the GM. We need uh A raid leader. Who will be... Jenkins. Jenkins! And we need a priest. <laughs> Who is... Ironically, guys... A lady. <laughs> uh, who shall be... Da -da 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 Kirby. Kirby. There we go. <laughs> after the searing zone collapsed as a disclosure I was around 16, yo 16 years old when this went down once one of my friends recommended to me a new and upcoming Polish only TBC private server shit Polish only wow that promised an awesome blitz like experience and such the server launched and I joined after the initial rush 
I made a Blood Elf Hunter. Got it to level 70, equipped myself in 5 man heroic gear and all that good stuff. The guy who recommended me to the server got me into one of the top raiding guilds. It's worth mentioning that the initial launch of this server had between two and 3,000 players. I made an application and waited. And waited. And waited. And waited. But nothing happened. No answer, neither exception nor denial. I was discouraged, disheartened. And I started to look for something else. Since all the other guilds had hunters. Sad times. Eventually I had to move server to a Wrath of the Lich King server where I joined a guild. Consisting of PvP mate players. Who wanted to move on to PvE though know, mate because it's fucking easy mode. They weren't what you expect though guys. They weren't, they weren't, they weren't. They took raiding really seriously. And they were a group of nice people, right? That's what you find. That's what you find. They were good lads. They weren't PvP though, mate. Yeah? They weren't gonna pwn you. Nothing like that. No, they were alright. They were alright. The guild was awesome. And some of the best WoW memories I have are with them. We were the only PvE guild on the server. Not because it lacked scripting. Right? Not because it lacked scripting. <laughs> it had too much scripting. <laughs> if you don't know what he means by scripting, he means mechanics. <laughs> it's not that the mechanics weren't there. It had too many mechanics. <laughs> Which is a bit of a bummer. The mechanics would overlap. For example, Grobulus had so many slime puddles, many of them would be invisible. Which made it more interesting. The zombies would keep spawning even during Gulf's AoE. There would be invisible Nerubian ads from Kel'Thuzad's last phase that would just gradually kill people. And then despawn randomly and respawn to continue to kill people. <laughs> and the highlight of them all was Colagrano Champ. Colagran had two extra invisible arms. They would continue to do their mechanics, although he couldn't see them or know they were coming. <laughs> I would like to see Colagran just... That should have been the heroic mode, man. <laughs> he just spots two extra arms. You're like, oh shit, this is fucking crazy. They should totally have done that. That would have been so much better if he just suddenly started growing way more arms. Anyway, we managed to deal with the struggles and clear the content. The noobs on the server either hated us or envied us. Most of us, because of the mechanics problems, considered PvE to be untouchable on the server and accepted that you just couldn't do it. So people would come up randomly asking, where did we get all that gear? Who did we talk to? Where would we find it? It was agreed amongst the guild that we should tell them that tier 7.5 was from Yetis in Winter Spring. As a joke! We said that to everybody. Not everybody fell for it. But sometimes when you check to slash who Winter Spring after somebody had whispered you, you could see high level players sitting there for hours and hours and hours. <laughs> what a fucking bunch of dickheads. <laughs> <laughs> There's always somebody. How do I leave the PG? Oh, F4, bro. Ah, ah, slash G quit, bro. But as it is with guilds, it succumbed to burnout. With all the extra mechanics, it was super difficult to raid. It was hard. Some bosses were damn near impossible. And the guild fell apart. I went back to Team Poland. And once again, began looking for guilds. Months had passed since the time I had applied to that old guild and tier 5 raids were soon to open I decided to once again reapply to the best guild this time though I didn't have to wait long I was accepted my first raid, re raid came quick and on one memorable evening we were heading to Gruul's lair the group assembled I listened in on the team speak the people were quite chill, relaxed an officer was leading the raid early since the raid leader had to stay late at work and would join us later Molgar died on the third or second attempt. No one shot, bro. Pretty tough. That pull, though. Nightmare. Nightmare. <laughs> As there were a few hiccups. Nothing big. And we decided to move on to Gruul. But Gruul refused to die. Gruul would wipe us at around 50%. Every single pull. Over and over again, Gruul would crush our tanks and then crush our raid. Or we'd see some shatters where half the raid would just fall dead on the floor. A few attempts later, the raid leader, Jenkins, arrived. I had never met Jenkins. 
and what followed was the barrage of shouts I thought I would only hear on stupid Anixia White videos. What the fuck is happening in here? How are you wiping up fucking gruel? And then he turned onto the officers. Are you this fucking clueless to fuck up a gruel raid? Am I the only one here that gives a fuck about this guild? What the fuck? I just sat there. I lowered my headphone volume and started to rethink every choice I had ever made in my entire life leaving up to this point. Jenkins eventually joined the raid group. He was a Turin warrior. Tank, obviously. He quickly started to move people around, calling people out. Why the fuck have all the warlocks got mana tied, you dipshits? Reminding people about the mechanics of Gruul. And one pull later, Gruul fell over, dead. After that, I seriously questioned if I wanted to be a part of something like this. I'd heard horror stories about raging, raging raid leaders. But eventually I just got used to the raging. I was rarely ever the object of Jenkins' rage. So it didn't annoy me as much. But now here's the catch. The guild I had joined now was not the guild I had applied for the first time around a few months ago. The old guild master and a couple of the core members had left the server with a bang. Getting banned by fly hacking themselves into my Hajal after getting fed up with the wild accusations of only getting progress by bugging out bosses. Which was partially true, as on this private server, warlocks could stack Curse of Elements on the target repeatedly. So sometimes you could even one-shot bosses. Yeah, I call that a pretty big bug. <laughs> if I'm being honest, <laughs> if I'm being completely honest, I would call that a pretty serious bug. If you can reduce the resistance of a boss multiplicatively in order to allow, like, one fucking fireball to kill it, yeah? Then, yeah, that's, uh, that's a pretty broken thing to do, to be honest. <clears throat> that's pretty broken. <laughs> the guild I applied the second time to was actually a merge of two guilds. And Jenkins was the raid leader of the old guild. So shortly after I joined, three weeks tops, Jenkins called everyone online to a meeting where he said that this guild was dog shit, leave the guild and join him back in the old guild. At the time, I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I had only been there a little while. And looking at how suddenly everyone seemed to quit our guild, I quit as well. Why not? Everybody's jumping off the bridge. I'm jumping off as well. Sounds like a good plan. I joined the new guild. I later found out that the reason for this entire conflict between the old and new of the merge was because of Jenkins himself. The raiding resumed seamlessly, but unknowns to me at the time, there was a new face amongst them. Kirby, a priest. She was subtly pulling the strings on Jenkins. After a little while, she started to call him out on his own decisions. In public! As well as clearly asking him to go to private channels on TeamSpeak to discuss a decision he'd made. Apparently she had taken a break from the game until Tier 5 was out, so her influence wasn't noticeable then. The brief break from her lowered her influence on Jenkins, which resulted in them getting a little bit argumentative. And she left the guild to eventually come back now when the new guild was starting. It was pretty clear that old Jenkins had a bit of a chub. Of a bit of a chub for Kirby. Kirby started to abuse that. She started sending, eventually he started using it and eventually became an officer. And then even took the guild master role. So that our friend Jenkins could focus on raid leading. Why don't I take the burden from you? All right. Why don't you give me the guild master title? You could just be the raid leader. Yeah? Doesn't that sound like a good plan? No, 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 no. It's fine. Just make me the guild master. I'll deal with all the bad shit. And you can just focus on raid leading instead of having all this stress building up inside you. I'm doing you a favor. <clears throat> seen how many times have you seen that <laughs> how many of you here have seen that happen so many times so many times oh yeah i always do the girls in an irish voice oh yeah sounds like me no way <laughs> no way 
As Jenkins was often the rage master, he managed to scare away or kick some people with his temperament. In hindsight, I agree that Jenkins shouldn't really be a guild master, but just a raid leader. It was a good idea in theory, but as you could probably tell, our friend Kirby was not the right person to replace. Anyway, with her in charge and it was raid leader, it didn't take long for the rage to start again and the arguing and the arguing and the arguing. She decided one night she'd had enough. She broadcast in the guild chat that she was about to take the guild hostage. <laughs> I am taking you all hostage. And she systematically started to kick everyone from the guild. She then took the guild bank at the end. It took so long on a private server to get the guild back through the admins. Since so she obviously had some influence over the guild of the game masters. Being one of the only girls on the server. But eventually we got the name back. Which we felt was a huge achievement. But the guild bank was gone. It was gone. And as it was a private server our banks were buggy. So we had to use the guild bank. Kirby was removed from the guild. But she invited, she joined a rival guild. Who took her without hesitation. The problem was... There were almost half of the guild members of her new guild left in protest once they remembered who she was. She was later kicked from the guild and quit WoW altogether so that the guild could survive. We never know what happened to her. She just went on and disappeared. Maybe one day we'll see her again, but it's unlikely. Thank you for reading my story, Preacher. There is more to tell about these guilds and it's fall, but it's for another time. <laughs> Why would you give over? Fucking crazy. <laughs> you guys are nuts sometimes. Giving over that shit. Holy fuck. Uh, what have we got? Five minutes? I don't think we can do it in five minutes. I've got to pick up my son. Oh my god. Let's see if we can find a super short one. Whoa, 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 whoa. Mm -hmm. I have no super short ones, I don't think. Bear with me. I'll give it 30 seconds to find a super short one. And if we have one, we'll go for it. How long is that one? 97 kilobytes? Too much. <laughs> Too much. <laughs> uh... Okay, this might be terrible. <laughs> I'm just warning you guys. I'm just warning you guys. It might be terrible. I've not read it, but it's about six lines long. <clears throat> Are you ready? <laughs> We're going to go super, super fast. Uh, super fast. What's it called, this one? And we need one person. As it's terrible, I'll use... Uh, I'll save a Patreon name. And we'll have... Uh, Limed. Our good friend Limed. Right, super fast one to finish us out for this week. Hey, Bridget, I've been a while since the beta, when in the beta, me and a friend Limed knew someone working at that blizzard. Because of this, we both have things named after us in-game. But anyway, please don't use these names in the story. The story is short, but very funny, IML. The roles are me and Limed. It takes place in Wrath of the Lich King. Me and my friend Limed ran a guild with a few other people. We were a raiding guild with consistent progression. However, wiping was a different story. Limed had an anger management problem and would rage a lot. We knew it was bad, but apparently he turned off his mic for some of it, and we didn't even understand how bad it was. This we did not know. We were progressing through ICC, and had wiped again. Limed, as usual, started screaming and shouting and raging. It was normal, but in the middle of the next attempt, Limed just went silent and stopped moving. We wiped, of course. We were waiting for Limed to come back. All talking to him, asking who's okay. You there, bro? He's not moving. Maybe he's offline. No, his character's still online. The usual. He was still in TeamSpeak. This went on for about 10 minutes. We decided we would stop raiding and give it an hour. It was still early in the night and see if he came back. Limed came back about 10 minutes later. It was super quiet and super relaxed. We asked, what's going on, Limed? 
He told us his neighbours had called the police because they thought he was there was domestic violence happening in his apartment because of his rage. They thought he was continuously, night after night, beating the shit out of his mother. Even though his mother wasn't even there at the time. He had to talk to the police and show them into every nook and cranny of the apartment to prove that his mother wasn't locked under the stairs or in a cupboard or some shit. They came in, looked around, checked his PC, they showed him the key, showed him the game. <laughs> no, it's just the game! <laughs> it's just the game, look, I'm playing a video game. Where's your mother? Show us your fists! Is that blood? Is that blood? Ketchup, fatty! Stop it! Stop it! The happy ending of all this little rager was is that after this moment, he got much, much calmer during WoW and actually took a break. And then he recently got married as well. The end. <laughs> the end. That's it. It's like six line story. But that'll do to finish us up. <laughs> that'll do to finish us up. Show us your mother. Show us where she is. She's in here somewhere. And no, she is. Your neighbours are saying that you're doing it every fucking night. But luckily we're okay. Luckily we're okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that does bring us to the end of Drama Friday for this week. No web show tomorrow. There should be a drama. Wow, that story, I know. There should be a drama Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Okay, next week. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So if you want to get your story and get them in now, just so we can make sure that they're all good. I've got about 20, but it's always nice to filter them through. Um, so get your drama stories in. So live Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I'll update the schedule, which you guys see when the stream is offline. At some point this evening, I'll tweet when the new schedule's out. I'll probably just tweet the schedule uh, so you guys know it's there. And obviously, I'm going away. So we'll be mixing and matching some things. Some things will be shifting around, but it should be all pretty normal as far as most of you realize. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in with me over Stream Week. Uh, Mass Effect 2. I believe the law Mass Effect 2 starts going on the Gamer Dad's channel soon. I think. So if you can't make stream week, by the way, I should mention this more often. In fact, I should do a video on it just to make sure everybody knows. Uh, if you can't make stream week because we play it like UK time, right? <laughs> Which is pretty awkward. The youtube.com slash gamerdads is our other gameplay channel. That's where it is. And uh, all the stream weeks are up on Monday. Game Mass Effect 2 starts on Monday. They're uploaded there. Uh, so you can catch up with Game of Thrones, Mass Effect 1, Mass Effect 2 will start releasing on Monday, all that kind of stuff, alright guys? So if you want to see that stuff, and see all the people that I've accidentally got killed, maybe, maybe not, uh, then you can see that there. As for everyone else, thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great weekend guys, do something cool with it, and I shall see you on Wednesday. Alright, I'll see you on Wednesday for drama. Alright guys, thank you, be good. <laughs>